Welcome back to the Working Class Musician YouTube channel. I am Jimmy Franklin, and today I have another video where we answer your questions and question your answers. And today's question is, what is the most versatile electric guitar? Let's dig into it. So I get these questions sent to me by Quora in my notifications, and then they pique my interest and I have to go on here. I didn't think it's enough to just type something, I have to react publicly. Okay, answer number one. For some of you who don't know how this goes, basically, I just deem these answers true or false based on my personal experiences. Number one, Tassos. I think, I think he meant think, the most versatile electric guitar to play anything from punk rock to blues or even jazz is a Fender, parentheses, or Squire or anything due to your budget, Telecaster. A very simple guitar. Most versions have a tone and a volume control, two pickups, a three-way pickup selector, and you can play almost everything with this axe, even without a pedal board, just using your tone and volume control. Okay, this is true. Well, half true. And it says you can play almost everything with this axe without a pedal board, just using your tone and volume controls. Kind of. Right? Kind of. Let's say you had something like an orange terror stamp, which only is one channel and it's dirty sounding, and you plugged in your Telecaster to it. You could probably roll off and get some clean tones and do something jazzy. Yeah, you could probably get something like that. That's not a bad idea. I wouldn't run it that way though. I would use something a little bit more involved. You know, I would, if I was gonna do that, completely agree that the Telecaster is the most versatile, but so many people say it for some reason. I don't know why. Might have to bust the Telecaster out in a second and test that theory. Okay. Cool. Half true. We got there. Saman or Salmon. 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 I'm really, I'm butchering these names. Let me tell you something. Never expect to have Les Paul and Strat in one guitar. They're, they're completely two different things. But anyway, if you have a humbucker loaded guitar with a coil split, which makes enable to have both single coil and humbucker in one place, it will make it pretty versatile. And never forget the tremolo bridge. It adds versatility, but limits your ability to to down tune. So I can tell pretty much every PRS guitar are very versatile. Okay, he says after that, he says a Charvel Super Strat type guitar, which is also super versatile. PRS is a very, very important one here that I think in recent years has been truly underrated. For example, the SE line is made in Indonesia, which make amazing quality guitars if you've been following this channel for a while. The next level up from that, that doesn't get enough recognition at all, is the PRS S2. I think that doesn't get enough recognition because when they started making these uh, super strats like the Ibanez AZ and some of the Charvel SoCals and all of these, you know, the DKs, the PRS S2 kind of fell by the wayside. And the cool thing is for $1,900 now, which yes, I will tell you is expensive, but it's nice to get something for $1,900 that feels like it's worth $1,900 as opposed to buying a guitar for that much and feeling underwhelmed. And I don't have one in my guitar signal yet, but I've always wanted to get a PRS S2. You get an American made PRS with all of the internal bells and whistles and the great tone woods and the quality that you love from PRS. The only difference is you're just not getting the flashy flame maple tops and all that kind of stuff. But that really doesn't matter. For the quality of these guitars, I stand by PRS 100%. It's made, you get a great made in America guitar for under $2,000. That is worth the price. I will agree with that. And it does have humbuckers. Now, side note to that, Paul Reed Smith did set out to modernize the Les Paul, and he did a great job in a lot of ways. So he did add, you know, a whammy bar and, you know, locking tuners and all these other great things that just make the PRS S2 a wonderful deal. I will put links to all the guitars I'm mentioning below as well, so be sure to check that out. Clark says, any guitar played by a master guitarist. This is true. There's a video of someone interviewing fretless bass master Jaco Pistorius. The interviewer played a few notes on the bass. They shared between them. It sounded dull and lifeless. Then he handed the same bass to Jaco and it exploded with expressive growl and color. It's not the shoes. That last part is a reference to the it's not the shoes, it's the person wearing them kind of idea. It's exactly true. People say all the time the tone is in your fingers. I've seen countless videos of Eric Clapton playing Les Pauls and, you know, guys like, you know, you'll see Angus Young playing, uh, I saw there's a video of Angus Young playing uh, like an, a big old hollow body 
all of these guys, the tone is in their fingers. Eddie Van Halen could have played a Toys R Us Hello Kitty guitar. It sounded like Eddie Van Halen. It just would have. The tone is in your fingers. So that is true. Okay, here we go. I gotta, I gotta break out the telly now. If you could only have one guitar to cover the most musical styles, it would be the Telecaster. Yes, other guitars can produce a wider variety of sounds, but the Telecaster is useful and suitable for everything classic jazz. Ooh, he said classic jazz first. Blues, funk, pop, modern jazz, reggae, hard rock, country, everything without modification. A bunch of knobs and switches to mess around with or having a pedal board full of effects. When I think of versatile, that's what I think of. Okay, let's test this. We've said, we've said it enough. I'm gonna break out the Telecaster. I knew that this was gonna be a situation that I had to explore a little deeper. So the Telecaster's coming back out. Even though I just did a video with this Telecaster, it's coming back out now. Out of this, so what I'm gonna do is I have my Line 6 HX Stomp rigged up, running into my interface. Then I have the Neural DSP Archetype Nolly open right now, and I have the amp and all the effects and the EQ off and I'm only using it for the cab, which I have loaded an own hammer impulse response that sounds, it's basically a Marshall orange amp kind of hybrid that I love. So this is exactly what I would normally run. I got my orange cab right over here. So let's go over to the guitar cam, 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 cam. Okay, so first things first, they were mentioning jazz, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see what this guy talked about here. He did mention, he first says, uh, classic jazz. Okay, let's see. Uh... I think that works. Check. Check mark for that one. That one definitely works. Okay. So jazz so far sounds pretty good. It was a little bit bebop, but you know, it wasn't exactly smooth jazz. So let's see. From there, he says blues. Now I'm not even going to switch over any settings. I'm just going to leave it. Okay, blues definitely gets a check. It definitely gets a check. I could dig this. Okay, back over to the guitar cam. Let's see, what else has he said? Funk, I mean, that goes without saying. And the funny thing is actually, I think the middle setting is probably best for this. Oh yeah! Oh, that is Funk City. You know, so really, if you were listening to a funk, like let's say play that funky music is like one of the most typical ideas of, of funk. One of the guys is doing something. I can't remember what the part was where they do something. Let's switch over where they do something like that. Right. But the other guy is definitely doing a humbucker kind of. something like that so so the telecaster definitely can handle both sections of funk both of like the uh, you know let's see let's see now we've built a funk tune switch over to the guitar cam and do it. Let's see, middle setting. So far, that one gets a big old check. Modern jazz. I don't know any modern jazz, but it does say pop, so I wonder if this works, you know, something like... 
that works, right? That's a modern pop song. And it definitely, definitely when that song kicks. <laughs> heavy sounding and that's sweet. That was maybe a little overkill. We'll see in a little bit. Um, modern jazz, reggae. Okay, reggae. Sounds like I was in a Corona commercial. And then it says reggae, hard rock. Well, they say country, right? Definitely country. hard rock which scares me i'm gonna be very honest that this is scaring me about what i'm about to do but what i'm gonna do I do actually, I have, so in the Helix right now, in the HX Stomp, I have, my clean is a Friedman model actually, which I think sounds awesome. This guitar is a little weird for it, but I think it sounds really great. And I have, this is the PV Panama setting, and it just sounds just... That's Rage Against the Machine right there, you know what I mean? You could be, this guitar, you could be anyone from Bob Dylan to Rage Against the Machine. Isn't that amazing, you know, that... Riff? God, I love drop D. Okay, now I have this in my hands, let's see. All in all, I think that this uh, big old check mark because I have the Telecaster right now plugged in. He did say with like to have a pedal board full of effects and that's what I have. I have the HX Stomp, will be available in a link below and I'm running it just into like a cab sim right now, but either way, you run it into a cab, this is all you need. You need this guitar, an HX Stomp, and some sort of cab to run it through and you don't even really need the cab. You could have a speaker cab in it and you could just run it through the house PA if you feel wild and crazy. Next answer, Igor. Of course this would be Igor's answer. Igor says, Parker Fly. Comes with humbuckers, but they can be split into single coils. Has a piezo on board, that's great. Some also will have a MIDI built into them. I have two, they can be used for acoustic sounds, regular rock, jazz, even metal because of the fast neck. This would be true. They are incredible guitars. I think that companies like Stramberg, like Stramberg came out and made a new shape that was accepted all of a sudden. Strandberg picked up where Parker Fly left off. I don't think people accepted the look of the Parker Fly as much as they should have. I know I didn't, and I love weird guitars. And I just think it just, something about it just doesn't sit right where I think it's gonna be the accepted versatile guitar. But it's a great answer, there's no doubt. If you like the look of a Parker Fly, get one, they're awesome. Tori says, wow. I am I'm really amazed that no one here mentioned the very axe by line six. I'm not even going to continue on because in this conversation, she's right, but I think she's cheating. I think it's a great answer. The very axe is awesome, but again, it's not like the most wildly, it's not the most widely accepted guitar around and they still have kinks to work out. Very axe can do a million things you could do. You can have all sorts of different tunings on board and you just click the button and all of a sudden you're in that new tuning. It's great. I don't think the Variax is ready yet. Okay, last guy here. This is gonna be the last one, John, right? And he says, versatility of sound is not necessarily a desirable characteristic of a guitar. This comment, when I first read it, blew my mind because it's true. It's 
oddly, weirdly, I don't know why, but I feel it in my gut and in my chest that it's true. Why? Here's why. Often a guitar player chooses a guitar specifically because it has a certain sound, not because it can approximate the sound of different guitars. I have played guitar for 56 years and have played in many types of bands. In one of my bands, we played a range of music from straight up country to SRV. So I had a custom guitar with single coil neck pickup, humbucker, bridge, coil, splitter, so it could do single coil, like a Telecaster clean or humbucker Les Paul for the low dirty growl. It did an adequate but not great job. These days I play American professional Stratocaster because that's how I want my electric guitar to sound. Okay, so he goes on to say all sorts of other great things, and I think this is a great answer. Professional mechanics don't use Leatherman tools. They have a toolbox, capiche, and that's how you spell capiche. John is correct. I don't think Angus Young, I don't think Bruce Springsteen, I don't think Yngwie Malmsteen, I don't think Les Paul, the man himself, I don't think they set out and said, I need a guitar that does 85 different sounds. I think I'm the weird one in this situation. And I think if you're watching this, you're doing this because like maybe you're playing in a band that does covers and you do need to achieve certain sounds. Or you are like me also in the way that you have a certain sound in your head that is only achievable by mixing and matching. And that's where I stand. I think I like guitars that have a lot of different options. Like for example, the I always go back to my Ibanez AZ. The, the AZ has, so, has 10 different options, right? For tone variations and I only use three of them and those three are the ones that I really really love so I could say that I went for the Ibanez sound and it just so happens that that guitar does my Les Paul sounds really well that I love without breaking my back they're not perfect when I was when I was younger I only played Les Pauls because I heard the Les Paul sound in my head again Angus Young from ACDC played he's played Gibson SG's for literally probably 60 years at this point. There is, and for him, there's nothing wrong with that. You look at guys, you know, you're not gonna complain, you're not gonna say to Slash, even Slash had his moment where he played other guitars, but they were never guitars that were super versatile. He never looked at it. It doesn't, at least it doesn't seem like he ever said like, oh, I need a guitar that sounds more like a Stratocaster on stage when I play Sweet Child of Mine. That doesn't make any sense. So I love that answer. I do think that is true that Again, I mentioned earlier that I've seen, you know, guys like guys like Eric Clapton play Les Pauls, but they still sound like Eric Clapton. You just want the tone that inspires you. So in that case, and I'm going to leave this video on that note, and I'm going to play some more heavy metal riffs on a Telecaster to uh, to close this one out because that those answers are absolutely. Let me just like let's get a big thing up on the screen. Those answers were absolutely epic. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna jump over to here. Let's see, okay. Oh my God, that was great. Thank you guys so much. Like, comment, and subscribe. I am Jimmy Franklin, and I will catch you next time.